these pizza cutting boards are turning out to be a very popular project. This one is done with a finish on it. And these four are sanded and ready to be, have the finish on it. And then I've got three more here that I need to uh, turn into rounds and then sand and finish. But I need some more wood. So I'm gonna go visit Monteith Lumber down in Old Bridge, New Jersey today. And we're gonna have some fun with that visit. So let's go. Monteith Lumber is an hour south of where I live. They are in Old Bridge, New Jersey. I love coming to this lumber yard because they have a great selection of hardwoods and they also have another business where they make moldings and they make moldings for the lumber yards across the state. So stick around to the end of this video because you're gonna see how the moldings are actually made. This is the entrance of coming into the facility. Another reason I like this lumber yard is because the people are extremely friendly. I've been here several times and every time I have a question or are looking for something, they can find it for you right away. So I'm going to be visiting with the owner, Jason Wilson. How you doing? I'm Jason Wilson of Monteith, and welcome to our store. And what a store it is. Yeah, we Check us out. a little bit of everything. You sure do. You got some yeah, walnut over here. Uh, everything from, from walnuts, all the flat stocks, you know, standard domestics, to all kinds of really cool exotics. Yeah. Um, we keep everything from S4S to rough planks, plywoods to match. Uh, some cool dogs. We keep like Black Limba and Wendy, both of them coming out of Africa, uh, Purple Heart, and see. So, be, so being a cutting board maker, this is what I'm uh, yeah. most interested in. There's uh, a lot woods. of cutting board guys, and there's just about any color you could want to do comes naturally in a wood. Right. You know, from a bright orange like your like yeah. your Badukes. I love the Badukes. Yeah. To the bright purple of the Purple Heart. Yeah. And uh, variegated colors like the black limbo or the zebra wood. These are uh, very reasonable in price, also. Yeah, some a lot of these, a lot of the African products are actually really reasonable in price. The uh, zebra wood and the wangi get to be on the more expensive side, but like things like black limbo are in uh, purple heart, uh, bubinga, they're actually really, really reasonable. So, but Duke is actually a great buy for the money too. Yeah. So, for the the, the lumber price recent price increases really didn't affect hardwoods, right? The, hard, the hardwoods, it did, it did affect the hardwoods a little bit. Oh, it did? Um, domestics worse than the, than the imports, although imports are starting to catch up now because of the, the shipping has been a problem, and container ships and oh, yeah. containers alone have been a big problem. I've heard about that, um, yeah. Domestics got hurt just because of t drying times and people not being at work and the mills not being up to full capacity because, uh, you know, white oak and, and uh, maple tend to take a year to dry. You know, by the time they air dry it for six to nine months and it goes into kiln for 60 days, you're a full year. So the, the shutdowns last year for COVID um, had the mills shut down for two months where they're not producing. And that's a lot of stuff that's not getting sliced until uh, the start okay. the dry process. So you forward, fast forward a full year now where we're starting to see shortages and the price driving up is because they had a whole two months where they were not producing. Right. And, uh, and then you and then you, you couple that with guys that just aren't going back to work. The mills are not full of employees yet, so it's still not working to capacity. It's causing the prices to go up. Uh, okay. So white oak and hard maple were the hardest hit. You know, poplar and red oak and things that are in less demand are not quite hard to hit. Um, I have not had too crazy a problem with the exotics yet, but it's starting to become a problem just because the shipping is a problem. I've heard about the uh, shipping container shortages. Shipping containers have been ridiculous, yeah. I've heard, shipping containers are, are four to five times the cost of what they used to be a year ago. I heard that. One of my buddies, uh, he, a couple years ago, was paying 2500 3000 for yes. a shipping container from Asia, and now they're up to like $15,000. Yeah, dollars. 12 to fifteen grand. Yes. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's a little crazy. Uh -huh. um, see all these, see white oak, that's the big thing these days, cherry. The cherry production right now is really great. Um, cherries that is, has really come down in demand over the last 10 years. And so right now we're getting really good quality cherry. And, uh, and cheap prices on it. It's a quarter to, quarter to. So you're buying domestically and internationally? Correct. Okay, you're on Instagram. I'll oh, come to the uh, here. Black Limba, some cool zebra wood. Uh, zebra, zebra wood, we tend to try and keep it just ordered. 
for the most part. Right. Because you really get to see that 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 color and that grain. Right. And the flat cut it doesn't quite show it as well. Um, and then you know, do what you saw over there, purple heart, some curly maple, which is beautiful. See some of that. Do you have any spalted maple in stock? Uh, I think I'm all out of spalted maple. Spalted maple's been a little tough lately. Uh, we're in a little wormy maple left. Bird's eye maple I have. Uh, is this Chi Chen School, uh, the Caribbean Rosewood. Is this Black Limba again? That's Black Limba again, yeah. Yeah, then there's uh, some Bolivian Rose. Sorry, buddy. That's a killie. And you've got this other other side over here for yes. all the moldings. Yep. Right? We're also a mold and manufacturer. It's actually majority of what we do is manufacturing anything from stock moldings to custom moldings. Um, we're especially good at duplicating moldings. Right. Um, so we have this over here is our entire stock line, which is, you know, everything from some of the standard things you find anywhere to some of the profiles that always did well for us that we produced and made right. that we now keep stock for our building. It's just catered to the to the stair builders these days. Um, and uh, cause they just, you know, it's easier to deal with, they know what they're doing. But uh, the homeowners that, the homeowners come in and try and help them as much as possible. Um, the stair parts have changed a lot over the days, over the years. We're doing a lot of, guys are doing a lot of metal parts, you know, oak rails and, and uh, wrought iron balusters. Um, where we do well is the, uh, having to duplicate a custom, a custom rail or a custom baluster or custom spindle that you cannot find anywhere. That's the kind of thing that we do well at. What uh, people want to change, you know, there's, and a lot of these things, some of these things are not stocks anymore now. Moved on, I mean, the the, bal the metal ones, which were never a popular thing, are now the big thing. Okay. And some of the more traditional colonial stuff and some of the really ornate stuff is nobody buys anymore. Do you stock these really, or? No, so order? the, almost all of it's special order. Right, the, that makes sense. The, Standard spindles and handrails are generally in stock and they take just a couple days to get in. Any of the custom stuff is two to three weeks mill time, you know. Like I said, most of this most of this kind of stuff nobody buys anymore. People are getting away from the really ornate carved stuff. Alright, this is uh, this is our mill where everything's made. Uh, everything starts at the very far end of the mill though was brought in very raw. You know, right from the sawmills, and they still very rough cut. Um, down at the end is our, our rip saws. We can walk down there, I'll show you. The rip saws, which are sizing everything for width wise, and then the planers, which are sizing everything for thickness. And basically making a molder blank for our molders down here to, to put the profile on. So, right now, today we've been doing everything from door casings to walnut flat stock. Southern yellow pine casing and baseboard here. This stuff's uh, an old renovation for an old house, trying to get the gate of other things. Uh, to make it home for a new boat. Molder blanks that have been sized and ready for the molder. Okay, yeah, so that's yeah. a that's a bandsaw. That's a nice bandsaw. That's yeah. a bandsaw. Yeah. Yeah, we use that a lot for uh, resawing boards. We got something thinner we need to make. Uh, this this big boy here is our double sided planer. Double sided, right? Oh yeah, it's doing both sides at the same time. It does a pretty good job. It's got a carpet feed system, so it shapes to the size of the board, to the to the shape of the board. Our house, where we stock all the raw lumber that comes in from the sawmills to make our moldings or our flat stock or anything anybody needs. Some of the some of the raw lumber just gets sold off to the cabinet and door shops. The way it is, they have all their own equipment. Um, someone is getting you know cut down to a final molding, you know, for any of your projects. You see, there's a little bit of it. So there's just about a little bit of everything in here. 
my goodness. Um, you can see this first bay on our left here, these two bays. This is all Sapili. Everything from four quarter all the way to 16 quarter. You know, the four inch mm -hmm. stock right there. These three bays on the other side is all poplar. Four quarter, five quarter, and the third bay is the thicker stock, six to 12, six to 16. Um, this bay is all hard maple. It's a woodworker's dream in here, oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, each, gosh. Bay, each bay holds you know, between 15 and 25,000 more feet. Each bay like this one? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. This one here is white oak. Um, this whole bay is white oak. Everything from four quarter to eight quarter. They generally don't keep it thicker because it tends to crack. Uh, most of this bay is cherry, with the overflow in the front here being our red oak because our red oak bay fills up too fast. That's okay, so this is the uh, where it all starts in the molding head cutting room. Yep. Yep, when someone brings me in a, a profile, such as this one, that they, they just couldn't find anywhere else, mm -hmm. um, and they need to have something custom made. So it starts right in here with the sample, my computer, I scan it into the scanner, you know, paste the uh, profile into the computer, and then use my CAD program to trace over the designs, you know, and draw up a, a picture. And I'll trace over the designs, then eventually I can erase away that picture, and I have now the CAD file. Mm -hmm. And I use that to make myself my template for my steel cutters that I will, I will make mm -hmm. in the next step. So then once I have that, I send this template into my CNC router here, which is cutting our negatives um, out of an acrylic, you know, like a plastic. And it'll cut all the shape out, everything I need in the size I need for my machine. And then we take it into the next room once we have the cutter, once we have the uh, template. Okay, so now you got so, the acrylic. Yep, that's what the acrylic looks like. That's what the template looks like. It is the perfect negative of the actual piece we need. Okay. And uh, they take that and bring it into the uh, knife cutting machine over here. You got different types of blades, you know, from a fine diamond cutter to a, to a rough diamond cutter. And uh, they lock the steel into here. Now these are the pieces of steel that eventually got cut. That piece mm -hmm. gets cut in here. And this thing, you know, rides along on the steel using this template, you know, as a guide. Ah, uh, okay. So this, this template so, gets locked okay, into yeah. here. So it's a duplicating machine. All yeah, right. there's, it's all done by hand though, but yes, you follow, there's different shapes on this turret. So you just rotate the turret around to get yeah. the shape. That's just a square edge cut. So you would use something like that for here. You know, you'd rotate it around to get your, uh, to get your uh, rounded thing here for, for any of these radiuses. You know, that would fit in there. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing that, you're cutting the steel out here. Final product looks like that. It's really amazing because if you think back when guys only had a Stanley 45 or a Stanley 55, <laughs> yep. they, they were making it by hand by yes. hundreds of feet of it. And they were, that's a, a tremendous amount of work. So you yeah. had a lot of custom stuff from back then and now you're trying to match it up. Yep, yep, and we can, uh, we can do this much faster nowadays with this with the invent obviously the advances of the the CAD programs and the CNC cutters mm -hmm. and the grinders now. Um, we can go from old piece of molding to a new piece of steel to go with it in just over an hour. You know, whereas it used to take them you know, when I was a kid actually, it would take us it'd take me half a day to do one of these. Right. Before I had a lot of equipment. We used oscillating sanders and the the band saws and, and uh, some metal stuff, and, and we would cut them out by hand. Uh, so really, the technology's come a long ways. Sure. And, you know, half a day's work now turned into about an hour. Yeah. And um, then which, is, which is quite great. So then you've got all your inventory of it. Yeah, yeah. everything's cataloged. Everything. All of our all of our um, builders have their own drawers because they tend to have their own profiles. Oh, okay. So they'll call some of the big builders. They have a, you know a, a few a few casing options, few crown options that. Uh, they get a new job, they'll call us up, say, hey, this is the job name. They chose this casing and this crown option. We go to the drawer, you know, such as this guy, and we pull it out. And you can see it is packed full of the knives plus the templates so that they can resharpen them when they're dull. All right. After they use it for the job, the, the full-time steel guy in here will then sharpen the knife and put it away so it's ready for the next time they need it. Just fantastic. Terrific technology. Yeah. Well, Jason, I really appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me today. This has been uh, fascinating. This is my favorite lumber yard for sure. Yep. And I always Glad like I always like coming down. So yeah, it's uh, 
it's good it's good to see when people come in for the first time to see their faces when yeah. they see all the different types of wood that are out there it's uh it's quite amazing people yeah it sure are, is blown away with the, the different colors and patterns yeah and, it's and things come street. naturally in the in, in you know in the, in the in the woods very cool all right man thank you very much yeah how Bye -bye. Going? well i hope you like that road trip i had a blast today hanging out with jason and seeing the facility that he has in the lumber yard and like i said before these are great folks to to visit with and buy from so you know the drill if you like my content please like comment and subscribe and until next time i'll see you on another episode of bob's wood shop bye bye <laughs>